Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us for our human performance webinar. My name is James Grigson. I'll be hosting today's webinar along with two fantastic fusion sports, sports science consultants. We have Dan Duffield making his return to the program. Dan has had some experience, uh, probably our longest standing fusion sports smarter based consultant. He served in Australia, Europe, the U S and now he's back in the U S. So thanks for making the time Dan in the afternoon. He's also joined by Mike Compton about a year in the game with us as a fusion sports, sports science consultant, and it's been making some waves over there. So I'm really pumped to see both of them um, working their magic today. So essentially what we're looking at and, and, and you guys uh, know the function by now. And if you're new, of course, you can use the Zoom chat functionality to, to make comments or answer questions throughout. So please feel free to jump in and do that. Uh, if you're on YouTube and, and doing it retroactively, hello to you and please comment below and we'll, we'll see those comments and those questions. But today's webinar is a little bit of a slightly different one. Um, we're, we're looking at how to pull the pull data together. So what we see in, in the theme of these webinars is how, how to manage your athlete management system and the data inside of your athlete management system. So what we see a lot of is data siloing and whether that be a data siloing from an organization who has no software. So maybe they uh, just have it in Excel over here and a software over here and then pen and paper over here, or where people do have a, a, a software or an athlete management system such as Smarterbase and they still silo it to some respects. So what I mean by that is they might have their aura ring information and, and their aura data in one dashboard. They might have their um, Nordboard data in another dashboard. And I'm not poo pooing that. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing that, but the, where our consultants are going um, and what we're really seeing from, from our clients that are being, um, I guess a little bit more progressive is looking at the relationships between those two or three or four data sets looking at the trends between them and how can we use that information to better inform our training and our decision-making. So essentially in essence today, we're looking at how can we look at, how can we have almost a bit of a multifactorial analysis within some of our dashboards? And we have an example data set here today. So the boys are going to walk through a couple, um, one example of five random data sets that they have, they had access to, in their office in, in Boulder, Colorado. So they're going to take five data sets. They're going to, they're going to walk you through their mindset. They're going to show you the dashboard. And ultimately what they're trying to answer is the question of one, can I train today? And two, what type of training session should I do? So it's all going to be based off of the, the, the data and the interrelationships between the data sets. And it's going to help them in, be informed onto what type of training they should be doing. And should they be training to, to today as well? Now, of course, uh, this is just an example where we're not by any means um, pushing what you're about to see as the premier way to, uh, you know, to run your high performance unit. In fact, the, the latter. However, um, what this is showing is the capabilities of, you know, thinking maybe a little bit more laterally with your data instead of having them in silos. And we're just showing you an example of how can you pull that information together and how can we show and tell a really nice story to be informed quickly? So that's the other piece that the boys will touch on today. Okay, you've got the data in. What are we going to do when we're looking at telling a story of the data? So making sure it flows right, making sure it's simple so the people that can log in can get the information as quickly as they can and then get out and get to coaching. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Dan and Mike. I'm really excited for this one. Dan, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and then uh, you can jump on and take the reins there. Thank you. Just, uh, can you let me know, James, and you can see my screen? Of course, it's just starting to, to share now. Yep, you're all good, gents. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you for that introduction, James, and uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, it's interesting to be able to do a, a webinar for the uh, Asia Pacific region. I know we've probably got some some US uh, clients on as well, um, but it's very exciting to be able to present something back to the Australian group as well. I spent some time over there with the number of, of our clients. As James has already alluded to, what we want to do today is, is something actually we've been very interested in, in doing uh, 
um, we are sports scientists here at Fusion and we don't often get a chance to actually get out and, and apply a lot of our knowledge outside of the Smarter Base platform. But during the, uh, during the, the COVID lockdown, uh, Mike and I were, had some conversations and we actually went into the office and found a bit of technology lying around and we decided that we'd undo a little bit of a trial uh, for our own training and use some of this technology to uh, help us uh, direct the training that we were going to do. So uh, without going too much detail, we set ourselves a couple of goals that we wanted to achieve, we knew the types of sessions we needed to do to achieve those goals. And then we, we looked at the technology we had and, and tried to tie that in. So I guess the, what we want to deal with today is, is probably a couple of take home messages. And I think number one is when you're designing a dashboard uh, and, and there's, there's many ways to do it, but one of the best ways we found with our experience working with clients is actually starting with a question, a question about um, you know, what the dashboard's meant to do for you. So for us, ours was pretty simple. Uh, number one, it was, uh, we want to train today based off, based off some objective data that we were getting some, from some of this wearable technology. And I guess as a secondary question to that, what type of training should we actually be doing? So we, we started with that as our, I guess, starting point. And then what we did was we looked at the technology we had. So we actually had access to, firstly, uh, Omega Wave thanks to our great VP of sales, Trisha Sterling, who used to work out there. Uh, we also had access to Smart Jump, um, and, and that was obviously one of our products and, and very easy to get access to. We had Smarter Base for some wellness. Uh, Garmin, we just used as a bit of a load metric. We didn't do too much with that, um, just because it wasn't giving us necessarily exactly what we wanted. Uh, and then, um, Mike, you'll have to help me with the last one. But I might get Mike to elaborate a little bit on the, on the technology and, and what we actually did with that technology in, in, our, uh, in our study. Yeah, great. Thanks, Dan. Um, as Dan mentioned, you know, our, our question was the focal point. Um, technology was used as resources, tools to help paint that picture. And Dan will touch on that in a second um, when we get to the dashboard. Um, we took a step back, looked at our resources and what metrics were going to be useful to help see if they were all correlated and drive our question for what is today's training. Um, as Dan mentioned, we used Aura Ring. Um, uh, the metric from Aura Ring was the readiness score. Um, the reason being is because it encompasses, encompasses HRV, sleep, etc. Um, we used Omega Wave with DC potential, uh, some good insight from our very own Trisha. Sterling, VP of Sales Marketing, so kudos to her. Um, the one that Dan missed on was uh, wellness, using that subjective data um, mostly to flag muscle soreness. Um, the next one would be RSI for Smart Jump. Uh, the reason why we chose RSI was because it's a, a measurement of muscle tendon stress and uh, our, ourselves as well as athletes' uh, reactive jump capacity. Um, that is also why we thought bringing in muscle soreness would be a good metric to pull in and flag. Um, on top of that, RSI is a, a common measurement for neuromuscular fatigue. Uh, so we wanted to see if there was a correlation between aura and omega wave um, that we captured in the morning. Um, last one would be Garmin and just basic load from there. Um, so overall, the time all together was to get a good sense for how fatigued or ready our CNS was to drive, whether if we were gonna do a power phase, strength phase, or a maintenance phase. And if you can see the structure of the different technologies that we used, Aura was basically, hey, that's our sleep, that's what we're using throughout the night. Omega Wave is what we're gonna do straight away when we wake up in the morning, as well as wellness. And then RSI is gonna be right before our training session, um, as well as Garmin during our training session. I'll kick it back over to Dan uh, to drive through, I guess, a little bit of the dashboard and our uh, ideas on how we came up with to paint that picture. Right. Uh, thanks, that Mike. So, uh, yeah, as uh, as we've kind of already said, um, we, we we knew what we wanted to do with the technology, um, but then we also realised we wanted to have a have a dashboard that we could use to collate all the data together. And this is again one of the strengths of the Smarter Base platform is it's very easy for us to. Uh, 
use all these technologies because they're all integrated with the platform. So it was very easy to, to get data to pull in um, and then visualize on this dashboard. So probably the main point of today is basically going through this dashboard that we've got and trying to show you the picture that we wanted to create uh, for, for our training and, and to make decisions off. Now, for those who have tuned in for this webinar series, I know uh, Dr. Marcus Colby a few weeks ago spent some time talking about telling stories with dashboards, and that, and that is particularly important here. One of the points that he made was starting with a, with a group kind of view. So if, you're a, if you're a coach of a team or a group of athletes, you're going to start at, uh, at the group level and then drive down to the individual level to understand specifically what's going on with that individual. So just to familiarize you, so, uh, you with this dashboard, what we've got up the top here in our squad overview section is we've got three tables um, for our three session types. And then over on the, the right hand side, this is a visual that we, we saw a little bit back in the Aura uh, presentation or webinar we did uh, probably two or three months ago. Uh, which actually gives us a scatter of, of our athletes to kind of see where they fall. So just a bit of context. So each table represents one of those session types. And we're actually filtering these tables based on an algorithm we've got in the background, which is using the data from these variables to indicate to us, are we ready for a power session? If not, uh, we check if they're ready, if we're ready for a strength session. And then finally, if we're not, then we recommend that it's either a maintenance session or, or a recovery, depending on the day. So uh, although Mike and I have been collecting this data, um, the only real athlete in there in here at the moment is me and the rest are just our, our demonstration athletes. I know James James is laughing there. Um, we just wanted to kind of paint a little rich, bit of a picture. Real, real athlete, that's rich. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a stretch, but... Um, yeah, we, we wanted to put a little bit of real data in here as well. But uh, as you can see here, for a, for a coach, really simply, we've got the, the athlete name. And then for each of our variables, we're just using uh, some, some color coding to help indicate to us if they aren't ready for a power session, so say over here on strength, what are the variables that are impacting it? So here, we, we, a couple of our athletes uh, are pretty low on their Omega Wave score, the variable that we're using. So we recommended that they fall into a strength category. And then over here on maintenance, the main reason, main reason that this list uh, has so many athletes is because RSI, once we tested them, uh, once we test, if it comes up less than, um, less than their normal, less than their mean, um, we, uh, you know, we're in a position where we might not be able to do a power session and get the right adaptation. So we're just filtering each of these tables and that way a couple of decisions can be made off this if you're a coach. Firstly, if you had uh, programmed a power session for today, you can make a decision to say, okay, we've got this many athletes that fall into a power session, this many in a strength, this many in a maintenance. And then from that, you can either choose to go ahead with your prescribed session or you can pivot a little bit and say, and maybe change your periodization up depending on, depending on your schedule. So uh, probably a more simplistic view of that without all the numbers and, and, and the colors is just what we've done is we've essentially, we, we identified Omega Wave uh, and RSI as two really key variables for us. And so what we did was we actually plotted the athletes on this, uh, this scatter plot in, into quadrants. So you can see up here, we have our power quadrant. If their RSI is, is quite good today and their Omega wave is uh, is up as well. And we said, okay, well, based on that, um, we, we might be able to recommend the power session to them. But down here, we've got strength, maintenance. And then if anyone doesn't meet that criteria, we can, we can put them into a recovery quadrant as well. Um, so, Again, just a really simple visual for you to make a decision against your whole squad uh, in terms of what type of session you should be doing. Mike, did you want to elaborate on, on anything there? Uh, I think it's pretty solid. I think the, the one thing to note is, um, I think the challenging part is how many athletes that you do have coming in. Um, obviously, if you have 40 plus athletes and, and you're running a training session, it's tough to like individualize that program. 
Um, so if you keep training pretty simple um, and, and just mess around with the sets and rep scheme, um, as well as throw in some uh, velocity-based training, depending on if you are hitting that, that power phase, it's a good unit of measure. Um, other than that, um, the, the more individualized you can get, you can actually tap into, you know, that specific energy system and increase that capacity for that athlete if they are feeling good and ready to go. And if not, you pull back, um, maybe you know, program in some recovery or you hit that maintenance phase and, you know, and tackle the tasks ready for tomorrow. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. I think uh, at, this, at this point of the dashboard, as a coach, you have enough information to answer from a squad level uh, A, should we train today? And B, what type of session are our athletes capable of doing? So, um, again, we're trying to, we're trying to really, um, really nail home you know, that question. But there may be situations where there's a couple of athletes of concern to you that you want to drill in on. Either they might be athletes coming back from, from an injury or athletes who are underperforming or athletes who you're potentially you're just worried about um, because of their, their value or, or or their position in the team. So one of the things you can do then is you can scroll down and drive down into the more individualized view. So again, um, unfortunately, we've got to use me as an athlete today. Um, and I use that term athlete loosely. Uh, what we've basically done is, is this is, this is actually data that we've collected just a couple of weeks of data. So again, what we're trying to do here is just paint the picture of where, where this particular athlete falls. So we're using the same, pretty much the same visual as up the top here, except just for a single athlete, but we're doing it for Omega Wave. And then we're also doing it for Aura. You can continue to potentially have one of these for each of your key metrics and, and look for those correlations between the two. So again, we're doing the same Omega Wave versus RSI. So based on that, um, Know, we can we can safely say that a power session would be okay, um, but being being so near to that range, maybe maybe we pull back. Um, and we've got Aura, so that's just doing a a, a Z score on their on their readiness. Um, so we're we're looking at what what the average readiness was and, and calculating that Z score and comparing that against the RSI uh, Z score as well. And again, that's just confirming that okay, we're actually in a decent position to do to do that um, our phase. So we're just using that as a confirmation. And then just to really complete the picture here, we need a little bit of uh, time series data to help us understand how they've been trending. So there are a lot of series in this particular visual, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll go through each of them and explain the, I guess, the justification behind them. So probably the first thing you've noticed is the very colourful bars that we've got. Simply all that we're doing there is plotting the session type. Um, we're just, we've just given it a numerical value so that it appears on, on the chart for us. But each day represents the type of session that we actually chose to do on that day. So we've got um, blue for strength, maintenance is in orange, uh, green is our power sessions, and then the purple ones are actually a recovery day, just a, a rest day um, within that. So. Again, you can probably uh, make some comments about Mike and I and how we've periodized there. But again, we just went off what the data told us and, and just made decisions on, on what we ought to do on those days. The, the yellow line that's, that's plotting uh, throughout, that's, that's our Omega wave value. We can actually see just a couple of interesting ones here. We've got recovery day here where we actually saw a, we saw a drop overnight in our Omega wave. Um, it actually coincided with, with the day where we were going to have a rest anyway. Um, what was really interesting, we, ne we then had a, had a big drop, but we actually decided to still do a power session that day just to see what would happen. Um, again, we, we could have made the decision there that, okay, we weren't actually tracking very well. We could have changed up our, our philosophy there. Um, then you'll also see we've just plotted the RSI as well. Um, with a with a dotted white line, just to give us that context uh, about the RSI as well. And then finally, what we did, um, and I think this is a really powerful piece of the SmarterBase um, platform as well, we were able to plot soreness flags. Any day where we actually fell well below our, our normal for um, for muscle soreness, we wanted to plot that 
it just so happened that it coincided with a recovery day here, thankfully. But um, yeah, we, we really wanted to incorporate that wellness piece as well, just to give that um, that subjective element. Uh, you know, there's, there's a psychological element to training. And I think if an athlete's coming in quite sore, then, um, and, you know, being able to say, right, you've you flagged for soreness down on your objective measures, um, we need to potentially change, change up the training. So um, we, the other, just a couple of other highlights from this, I guess. Um, it's a pretty short dashboard. There are, there are a few graphs and tables, but we're not scrolling too far down the page and we're not jumping over multiple tabs. Just on a pretty much a one page um, report, we can get a bit of a sense of where our squad's at. And then if we need to, we're an individual to that. So um, Mike, again, do you have any comments about this, uh, this section at the bottom? No, I guess it, to kind of think about it and maybe a question back to you is I think the importance of the wellness piece uh, we do work with technology a lot, but that soreness flag, we, we have the, I guess, the luxury to obviously work together and understand each other's, you know, wellness. Hey, I'm a little bit sore today, but um, I think it's that relationship that, you know, understanding your athletes and how they feel. So did you think the reason why we hit that power phase is because although you were a tad sore the day before, we felt like we could push it a little bit just because based on our subjective data, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, it's, I was a couple of weeks ago, but I, I, I think there've been a lot of times where we've actually looked at the objective data we're getting and um, compared that with kind of how we're feeling. And we've made decisions um, off, off some days more off the subjective than we did off the objective. So um, yeah, it was just really, really, it was an interesting, interesting way we approach. Again, we're not saying it's right. We're not saying that anyone should do this, but just, it was the picture that we were painting and it was the decisions that we were making. So, um, yeah, it was, it was dependent on the day, really. Um, the other thing as well, I, I did actually, I should actually highlight, we've tried, just for the flow of the dashboard, we've tried to highlight Amiga Wave um, or keep them aligned as well as Aura, keep them aligned so that when you're looking at this, you can then go across to your time series to look at the trend over time and, and the same with Aura. So, Mike, um, um, yeah. Mike, I'm, I'm interested in, in your comments here. As someone who, who worked in the college scene as a strength coach, the, the data that you're getting back, you know, as an example, that session there where Dan has flagged and he's had some muscle soreness, but you still hit power, power the next day. I'm, I'm really interested to hear your philosophy on, on how you look at data when you're looking at programming the next session. So, you know, how much do you let that information influence your decision for the next day. I know it's a, a key thing that you like to talk about, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I get, just from previous experiences, um, I did have a, a smaller population of athletes because I had, I've worked with basketball majority throughout my career. So I had, you know, you're looking at 15 guys and then they're coming in uh, throughout the day. So maybe groups of three. So I did have that opportunity to be a little bit more individualized with with the athletes based on how their body, their body felt and, you know, and tapping into that, that threshold if they could get there and maximizing on that. Um, but to your point, like if we're in a power phase, you know, you're strapping up that Tendo unit or gym aware. Um, and if they're not hitting their velocity based on, you know, the intensity that's prescribed, you can simply just lower the, the intensity, lower the weight and, and adjust mid session. Um, so I think that's what the idea was uh, when my, Dan and myself were training, it's like, all right, he he felt good. He was hitting those numbers. So let's keep working. Let's keep, you know, maximizing his power and, and tapping into that CNS to make sure we can expand his, his threshold. Um, so if not, I mean, you can simply pull back. If you can drop into a maintenance phase, you're just going to, you know, adjust your, your volume, your set and rep scheme. So, and then we'll come back tomorrow and, and see where he's at. But I think if you're just programming from a sense by like every four weeks, you could be missing out um, on an athlete's potential to train at a, a higher level for that particular day. Um, so James, just one other piece to this that um, I, I might get actually Mike to talk through as well. So uh, this is all good and well, this dashboard, but it actually requires a fair bit of data collection and, and actually some of it, comes from the, the athlete themselves. So there's a piece here 
where the athlete needs to interact with the platform. So just quickly change my um, change my screen, and then I'll let Mike just talk to this this uh, athlete dashboard that we've built. Can everyone see the, the mobile device there? Yep, yep, we got it. Perfect. All right, Mike, away you go. Yep. Uh, so the, the importance of the athlete app that we have right here is obviously for us to regurgitate the information to see what's going on. But more importantly, the actual athlete, if you were coaching, um, I think that's very important to give feedback to the athlete so they understand what they're getting themselves into for the day and how they can better themselves. Um, so as Dan keeps flipping through this, it's organized by from the morning. So in this morning session, you have your wellness questionnaire, you have Aura and Omega Wave. So those are the three things, like mentioned earlier on the webinar is like, Aura is gonna represent your sleep data. So that's straight away in the morning, you're gonna hook up your Omega Wave right away once you get out of bed, and then fill out that wellness questionnaire from yesterday's training session. Moving forward, you have your pre-training sec uh, section. Uh, we, did, we do do a way in, way out. Um, just so we make sure that, you know, we're rehydrating appropriately depending on percent change. Um, so that weigh-in, which, which is blue, um, basically notes, hey, the athlete did their weigh-in today. It's highlighted blue. We know it's accomplished. Uh, underneath is uh, RSI. So it's just a quick measurement of when they did their RSI prior to training. And then down below, you have another section that uh, that is labeled post-training. Um, you have a night nice weight change percentage. Um, and then underneath, it's basically saying, how many ounces do you need to drink within an X amount of time? So right now it's, you know, drink 51 fluid ounces in the next four to six hours so we can, you know, get our, our weight back from our initial weight in. And then lastly, you'll see RPE from this, uh, the actual training session. Um, RPE is, is labeled as black right now. The reason being is because it has yet to be completed. Um, so once that RP is logged, it's going to change that specific color. But we do think that it's very important to have some sort of feedback back to the athlete. That way they're staying in the loop, they understand training, and we're educating the athlete on the reasons of why we're actually doing a certain training session for that day. And, and the dashboards that you saw on, on the desktop gents, that would be something that would be able to be put onto the mobile as well for, for the coaches. Because I see this is a relatively simplistic way to view the information on the mobile phone from a coach's perspective. So would, that, would it look kind of similar to, to this from a coach's perspective on a mobile? Yeah, yeah. It would, it would um, render for the mobile device. So essentially it would probably, I guess it would stack the, the tables on top of each other and the graphs on top of each other. So you, you may not get the same layout, but uh, certainly it would render nicely on the mobile device and, and you, could, you could make the same decisions just working, working through it on the mobile device. And uh, to that point, James, I think the mobile device is critical in this workflow because majority of the technology and the information that we're capturing is in real time. Because right yeah. when they get from their RSI or they, they finish their smart jump right into RSI, they're going right into training. So the faster that we can get real-time data to make those decisions is, is definitely critical. Gents, was there anything further that you wanted to, to jump onto, either on desktop or the mobile? No, that pretty much covers it. I think, as I said in, in the first part, like we, we had a question uh, we wanted to answer. And I think, um, well, we, we felt that um, when we designed this dashboard, we sat down together and we designed it, that we were getting the answer we wanted. And, and certainly a great way for anyone who wants to build dashboards in any, in any uh, situation that it's always good to start with a question of what's the purpose of the dashboard? Why do I want to build this? Um, and then again, there's always, there's always a workflow piece. So um, the, the dashboard that we showed is only as good as the data that's coming in, which is where the athlete view comes in, being able to get them to check off the pieces so that the coach has the information they need to make the decisions. Fantastic, mate. Couldn't have said a bit of myself. Um, so that was, you know, the, I guess from a question perspective, uh, I just wanted to add a little bit of that little piece in there as well. The, when, if you do have an environment where you do have those um, siloed data sets and you 
I, I guess looking internally and going, okay, what am I trying to, what am I asking myself? You know, I don't think people necessarily from our, from our client's perspective at times, I don't think they're when, and I've seen you guys prompt them, the, um, they may be subconsciously asking themselves a question and then looking at those silo data sets and going, yep, you know, there's my answer, but it's in three different sections of, of the system or it's in multiple different software. So, I think, you know, if you are in an environment where you are looking at athlete data management, um, whatever software you're in, start to maybe just have a little bit more critical, critical thinking next time you go into to your system and go, hey, I'm looking at, you know, three different pages here just to try and find one answer. Is there any way we can pull it into the one place and, and do something similar to what Dan and Mike did and start having those two data sets um, or three data sets or four all together in a multifactorial analysis? As we begin to wrap up here, we do have the Q&A, so please jump in. You can uh, use the chat or the Q&A. You can raise your hand if you're a talker like me. So there's a raise hand button there so you can actually talk with us. First question comes in from Stephen Durry down in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Uh, he says, in situations where you have used this with athletes, how is the athlete compliance and buy-in? Uh, Mike, you, you can field that one or uh, you've got a little bit more experience in that area. Yeah, sure. Uh, great question. I think first things first is, um, I guess through my experiences, is before we even start a training session, it's education uh, to the athlete on the reasons of why we're doing certain things. Um, so I think the more they, they know and understand the weight room or, or whatever training session, regardless if it's on the field or you're doing some skill work, uh, things of that nature, the more they understand the reason why, I think they'll buy in a little bit more. Um, as we touched on a little bit, the mobile app is a great feature. That way they can always go back and look and see, you know, day to day. Maybe we throw in a time series chart um, as well on the app just so they can see their trends over time. Um, and then I believe, you know, the last thing is, is I don't, I don't know an athlete that doesn't love, you know, explosive movements jump in, you know, being, um, I guess, dynamic in their movements within the weight room and, and, and things like that. So I think uh, the more fun you can get and those power and explosive exercises, um, in our opinion, obviously, are are, are, are blast. So um, I think athletes will, will definitely buy in if they get to move way fast, they get to do plyometric exercises, because it does correlate to majority of the sports that that athletes play. And I, I guess I'll just touch on it a little bit as well, um, not from personal experience, but just from some of the, you know, the webinars that we have done previously um, and some of the elements I've seen from other clients is more so, Stephen, when when the, the clients are kind of making the the app the one-stop shop, so not just your, your strength programs or your wellness feedback or your training load feedback, but also game information, coach reviews, um, profiles, trying to have all that information in the one place, I think ultimately drives that compliance and that buy-in because it's not a case of the player goes to the coach to get the coach feedback. It's actually on, on the application and then, and then they talk about it after. Um, we, we did a webinar on that a couple of weeks ago and I, I'll, I'll share it with you after, mate, just so you can have a little look at, at, at different ways that we've increased um, athlete engagement. Second question comes in from Rocky Marshall. Rocky asks, how is the data being ingested um, so how is the Omega Wave and Aura data being ingested? Is this an API or an Excel? Um, Rocky, both of those are APIs. So it's an automatic push from, from those softwares into the Smarter Base system, meaning it hits the, hits the cloud for Omega Wave or Aura, and we uh, have a relationship with them. So we automatically take that information and assign it with the, the user's profile. So, um, you know, a couple of other data sets, if we don't have an integration, you're right, we will... Excel import into the system. Just opening up the Q&A, which is not working for me. Give me a second. Uh, Jesse Green, g'day mate, good to hear from you. Obviously each organization slash staff is different, but what charts, visuals, dashboards, structures have you found really stick with coaches and players? Great question. Dan. I guess uh, Dan, are you there? If not, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, looks like Dan dropped out a tad, but um, as far as like visuals for, for staff, I think it's the verbiage and the colors uh, that really stick. 
Um, it's, a, it's a quick representation of what's actually going on. I think with um, other visuals that are showing like raw data that's coming in, um, a lot of head coaches and don't really know what like a, a Z score is or, or how that even correlates to training. So I think uh, the more that you use colors, icons, or, or even photos to drive that and paint that picture for the head coach to make those decisions um, definitely is a, is a big sticking point. We've lost the athlete. Poor, poor Dan. <laughs> We've lost our premier athlete. Uh, just waiting for any final questions to come through. As we do wait for those questions to come through, I will begin to wrap up. So we have a, oh, here he is, he comes back. Uh, we have a, a survey that will be emailed out to you following this webinar. We would love to hear any feedback. We would love to hear any topic suggestions as well moving forward. We've had a few and we do have them banked and ready to go. Uh, we are going to continue to do these webinars post COVID-19. Uh, it's not going to be something that we're just going to do for a little bit and then stop. We've really found that our clients are, are getting tremendous value from this and something that we want to continue to push out um, in the live format. And then of course, as you guys get back to training, post-production is going to be pretty important as well. So making sure that you can, you can see little snippets and, and, and clips on, um, on all your, your various platforms. So we're looking to do this once, oh, sorry, twice a month. So uh, once every fortnight, we'll have two webinars a month. That's, that's our, our pledge. So we're, we're looking to, to do that for the rest of, uh, the rest of the year or, or um, you know, in the remaining future. So look out for those, look out for those emails with those certain topics. Um, haven't quite locked in a, a final topic for the, ne for the next one in two weeks time, but I'm sure you'll hear that shortly. There's no, there seems to be no questions coming through, no final questions, no one's raising their hands. So with that, for, for Mike Compton, Dan Duffield in the US, I'm James Grigson. Thank you very much for joining our webinar. Have a great day, slash night, wherever you are in the world. Thanks, James. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, James. Thank you.